Don Willow Tree Historical Landmark Good morning, adventures. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Today, we're gonna go to a small town called Solvan, California. In the meantime, we're gonna go through a couple historical places. Um, the first one, it's called the, um, um, the Chinaman Gravesite. Um, it's over there by a small town called McKittrick and then um, the second one it's gonna be um, uh, what do they call it um, button willow I guess there's a button willow tree over there where merchants something like that they used to gather uh, I'm gonna say like a um, hundred years ago or something like that or a little bit more than that. I'll let you guys know a little bit more of the story once I get there. And um, we'll see what happens. Uh, look at all this corn right here. Awesome. There's a lot of pistachio on this area and almond. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, we're getting close to that historical willow tree. I think this is the one. We'll stop by and see uh, what do we have here. Oh yeah. This is the one. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, this is it, this is the famous historical tree. Okay ventures, here we are at the Button Willow historical tree, I'm going to show you guys a little bit around it so you guys know what's going on. Alright, so apparently this is the tree right here. <clears throat> Yep. This tree has been here for hundreds of years or at least this particular location. See I like how they fence it in. And I think uh, Kern County did a pretty good job doing this right here. I'm gonna see if I can get in there without touching anything, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty awesome without disturbing anything. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It looks like people, they do stop and um, kind of sit around. And, but um, one of the things that um, it would be nice, like if people bring trash or something like that, you know, pick it up, don't leave it around. I had to pick up a little bit of trash that was here, you know, it just, it would be nice if people respect that, you know. Yep. So this is the famous tree. So right here it has, oh, okay. There's a plate right here. There it is. Let me see what it reads right here, what it says. California Historical Landmark, Bun Willow Tree. A lone tree landmark on an old Trans Valley Trail. It was an ancient, ancient, Yukot Indians 
meeting place. Later, a location for white stock rodeos, millers, and lux establish their headquarters and store here about 1885 the town of Button Willow take its name from this old tree and rodeo grounds. Dedicated February 2nd, 1952. Marker Place by Kern County Historical Society. Kern County Museum, State Registered Landmark Number 492. Nice. Man, so this thing, it does have quite a history. Pretty awesome. This is very good. Button Willow Tree, historical landmark. Uh, for those of you that don't know what's a cotton plant, I'll show you guys a little bit about beautiful cotton plants over here. This is it. It's a uh, beautiful flowers right there. This is awesome. Look at all that cotton. This is where your 100% cotton garment comes from. Okay, ventures, let's go to the next site. Okay, gentlemen, I think I'm getting a little bit closer to the Chinaman. Great site. See what happens in a bit. Okay. Okay, Ventures, I think this is the place. We should be somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, according to the GPS. You see? Oh, I think this is it right here. Yep, this is it right here. Okay. See right here, turn around. This is it right here. It's a little bit of history right here. So here we are, Ventures. Um, we are at the China man grave site um, as you guys can see um, we are completely on the middle of nowhere power poles and that's about it so this is it right here here we are I hope there's no 
rattlesnakes over here, even though I got my riding boots. Giving you guys a little glimpse of what's in here. It's hot all right, so there's a sign placard here. Hanging from the fence, there's some posted literature, and it reads the following. Although the Chinaman's demise is not mentioned in this article, this is the horrific true story of the Chinaman's tale from the Morning Echo, Bakersfield newspaper, October 12, 1907. October 11, at about 5 o'clock this morning, Fred W. Sperry and two companions sleeping in the bunkhouse on the Vishnu Oil Company lease about 21 miles northwest of McKittrick were awakened by a series of unearthly yells originating in an adjoining bunkhouse and looking out they saw a terrible sight. Billy Glenn, one of the employees of the lease, stark naked and apparently insane, with a long butcher knife in his hand, was chasing the Chinese cook around the bunkhouse and making the air hideous with blood curdling yells. After the Chinaman had made his skate down the road, Glenn turned the knife on himself, burying the eight inch blade into his body several times and partly disemboweling himself. He then saw Sperry and the other boys in the bunkhouse and made a rush for the door, trying to batter it down, presenting a horrible sight to those inside. Sperry and his companions grabbed their guns, beginning to realize that they might have to battle for their lives. Glenn charred the door several times. Kill me, for God's sake, kill me, he yelled. He finally forced a partial entrance into the house and Sperry broke the stock of a gun over him and knocked the knife out of his hand. Both stooped for the knife, but Glenn got it and failing to reach Spurry again, he plunged the weapon into his own abdomen and neck. He then made another effort to get into the house. Spurry again hit him over the head with a gun, stuck, asking him for a few minutes. That terrible loss of blood was beginning to tell on the maniac, and he finally walked off and lay down where the boys later were able to hold him down. Spurry sent word to a neighboring lease and endeavors to wash the wound but it was found impossible to do anything as the abdomen was literally hacked into pieces and about 9 a.m. death came. The next reading it's based on a local that is very familiar with the story. I have worked in the oil industry my whole life and since the mid 1980s i have heard many different versions of how billy glenn and the chinamen met their untimely end from the story of billy cutting off the chinamen's ponytail as a prank and the chinamen in turn had killed him 
with a knife, thus prompting Tom Glenn to later that day come and avenge Billy Glenn by killing the Chinaman. To the both of them engaging in a knife fight for an unknown reason and they both die as a result of it. Unfortunately, there is no record to be found of what the Chinaman's real name is or what he actually died from. Did Tom Glenn actually kill him in revenge or did he die from a wound received from Billy Glenn? Back in that time period, it was known that the Chinese would supply opium to the oil field workers and some believe that the Chinamen may have given Billy Glenn opium and he might have slim simply lost his mind. One thing that is for sure, there are still many unanswered questions about what actually led up to that fateful outcome on October 11, 1907. With no disrespect intended towards any anyone, I felt that it was important to tell the real story of the China Men's Tale as it has become a part of a local history. February 25, 1868, died December 26, 1940. Here we got W. Glenn, born 1867, died October 13, 1907. And then we have um, Chinaman died October 13, 1907. Hmm. Seems like people are leaving pennies and stuff like that. There's another cross over there. And there's this one right here. And then there's another one right here. So I'm thinking... Um, the stone in the back over there represents Tom Glenn and then the cross in the back over here it represents W. Glenn and then that's the cross on the back over there for the Chinaman what I'll do I'll set a stone and then uh, leave a penny um, in here so yeah, I'll, I'll leave a stone and a penny, I guess, to follow on with that tradition. Um, I really don't know um, what that represents, but um, let's see what happens. Let's see, just a regular stone. Let's see if I find something unique. Um, This right here. Yep, something like that. Go to the mule here and then uh, see if I can find penny or something. All right here. Penny. So I'm not going to leave uh, <laughs> three pennies or something like that because I think there's already multiple pennies here but um i believe this something like this thing maybe something like this and i'm gonna have it set for everybody something like that put this right here then i'll put the penny right there i'll leave my uh my penny here 
with my stone. And this is um, a penny from uh, 2014. Right there. Yep. Alrighty then. I'm gonna get back in the mule and uh, see if I can make it to Salban City, California.